Have you ever really taken the time to think about success and the relationship that it has with fear? And maybe that should be the other way around. Maybe it should be the relationship that fear has with success. It was really interesting. I was on a podcast interview recently with an amazing guy who wrote a book called Success Left a Clue. His name is Robert Riopelle. And he said something in that episode related to fear that I had always known, but the way that he said it completely blew my mind. Can't wait to share it with you. My name is Amber Furman, and this is the More Than Corporate Podcast. Welcome to the More Than Corporate Podcast. I'm Amber Furman, recovering perfectionist and serial accomplisher. If you're anything like I used to be, you've been living your life thinking that if you accomplish enough stuff, you'll finally find the success you've always wanted. But what if it's not about accomplishing more stuff? What if it's about accomplishing the right stuff? I believe you don't find success. You create it by intentionally designing the life you want and having the courage to get out of your comfort zone to live your design. I went from doing what I was supposed to do to doing what I love to do, and now I get to help others do the same. Keep listening as I chat with inspiring people who make it their mission to live their best life every day and learn how you too can live the life you've always wanted. Really quickly, before we jump into this episode, I wanted to remind you that it is brought to you by Success Development Solutions and the Design Your Life Book Club. What is a book club and why would you want to be a part of one? I know it's a crazy thought, right? Are you somebody who knows that you should read, but maybe you don't read enough? Or you keep telling yourself that you're going to finish a book and then it sits there half read for a little bit? What amazing opportunity would it be for you if you could read those books with other people? If you had a group of people that you could not only be held accountable by, but you could learn from. Because if you line 10, 15, 20 people up and you give them the same book and you ask them what it meant to them, you're going to get 10, 15, 20 different answers. That's what's so cool about the Design Your Life Book Club. You get to not only read books that are about business, personal, professional development, you also get to talk about those with other people to be able to experience and your perception to be able to grow your network and grow your mindset. It's a fantastic opportunity. And then like the little cherry on top, we actually connect you with the author of every book that we read. We give you the opportunity to jump into a Zoom call, to meet them, to ask them questions, to talk about what was powerful about the book for you. I'm so excited to be able to finally bring this to fruition. And if you are somebody who knows the value that connection has in your success, somebody who needs to read more, maybe doesn't read enough, somebody who wants that group environment. And let's be real, we all want to talk to the people who write the books that impact our lives. If that sounds like you, then click the Calendly link below. Let's have a conversation about whether it's a good fit for you. I'm super excited to be bringing the Design Your Life book club to fruition, and I know that it's going to be a huge impact on those who value success. I look forward to talking to you about it soon. With that being said, let's go ahead and jump into this episode. All right, so what was the statement that was said to me? What did Robert say that changed the way that I look at fear in relationship to success? Let's step back for just a minute. You guys have always heard me talk about how you push through your comfort zone, how fear is that thing that you can't allow to hold you back that thing that you get to push through to get to the success on the other side of it. What Robert said though was fear is an amazing motivator. And I thought, wow, it really is. Take just a minute and humor me because I know that if you're anything like me, what's going through your head is, but I don't like to be afraid. Why would fear motivate me? Exactly for that reason. Think about the things that you've done when they scared the ever loving shit out of you. What were you thinking right before you did those things? Were you afraid of what would happen if you did them? Were you afraid of what would happen if you didn't do them? Right? That's the other side of fear that we don't talk about very, very often. Think about starting that business. Think about making that connection. Think about asking that guy or girl out on a date. If you're me and you think about fear, you're going back to your first obstacle course race. Think about getting ready to jump off of that platform for the first time. Think about whatever it is that when you think fear, what comes to your head? 
And then take just a minute and put yourself in that position and tell me what were you thinking right before you took action? Was it, what if this doesn't work out? Was it, I can't stay in the position that I'm in any longer? Was it, I have nothing to lose? Or was it something else? All of those statements are fear-based, right? You're afraid it's not going to work out the way that you want. You're afraid of what's going to happen if you don't take action. You're afraid of what people will think of you if you bail. If I don't jump off this platform, there's these whole group of people down here looking, waiting to support me. And what are they going to think about me? The answer is absolutely nothing because people don't think about us as much as we think they do. In our head, though, everybody's judging us. And this is where really one of the big issues with fear comes in and something that I really want to start this off with. People say, oh, I'm afraid of failure. I'm afraid of failure. And my question to them is always, are you afraid of failure or are you afraid of what people are going to think about you if you fail? How many times do we try things and we don't really tell anybody that we're trying them? Because what if they don't work out? Well, if we were truly afraid of failure, then we wouldn't try those things at all ever. But when we try them and we just don't tell anyone, then it's not that we're afraid of failure. We're afraid of what people are going to think of us when we fail. And that is a much more common fear than the actual fear of failure. We all know that failure happens. We all know that things don't always work out the way that we want them to. You've heard me say over and over again, there is no failure, only feedback, right? What did you learn from this failure? And if the answer is anything, then it's not a failure, right? It's feedback. So when I say failure, please keep that in mind. All right, so with that being said, let's go back to this idea of fear. What are you afraid of? What are you afraid of that keeps you from doing the things that you want to do? The other side of that, though, and what I really want to dig into today is what are you afraid of that causes you to take action? What's that thing? I know that there's been so many times where I've thought I might regret taking action. I will more regret I don't even know if that's English. I will have greater regret if I do nothing, right? It sounds so cliche, that idea of, do you want to be the person that regrets not taking action? Or do you want to be the person who's in the same spot that you are next year that is saying, what if I would have started earlier? The moment that somebody said that to me has shifted the way that I look at fear, because I don't want to look back at my life a year ago. Success means so much to me. And there's so many different answers. But failure to me is staying the same person that I am now. And so if I look back a year ago and I am truly the same person or similar, I haven't grown, that's failure to me. And the fear of that type of failure is what keeps me pushing, what keeps me creating new opportunities, that keeps me reaching out to people, cold calling, messaging people, sales in general, scares the shit out of me. I hate it. So many people do, right? We just want that thing to work out. We've created this amazing product or service. We know that it's going to work out. We know that it's going to impact lives and have this huge impact on people. We just need them to know about it. And I did a little bit of a conversation about this in one of the prior episodes, but that idea, the field of dreams idea that if you build it, they will come. It is the biggest lie in marketing. You can create whatever you want to, and nobody is going to care unless they know about it. So how do you get people to know about it? You talk to them about it. Well, that initial conversation, especially in this world where you're constantly getting hit up on social media for messages, you never know what somebody's real intention is. You don't know what angle they're coming from. For a long time, that terrified the hell out of me to the point where I didn't do it. 
I didn't take action. And then as time went on and time went on and time went on, I thought, what's going to happen if I don't talk to people? And nobody knows what I have to offer. And nobody can be impacted by the things that I've created. And that truth and reality of the answer of that question is what really caused me to start digging into sales and learning a better way to do it. A way to truly connect with people, which you guys know if you listen to this podcast is one of my biggest passions is really building connections with people. I love meeting them. I love learning how we can support each other, right? What is that biggest fear for you? What is that fear that is holding you back from accomplishing what you want in your life, your business, your relationships, your health goals, whatever it is, and then flip that. And what happens if you take no action? What happens if you do nothing? And how much does that scare you? Fear is a great motivator. It is. When we talk to people and we say, why did you start your business? I didn't have a choice. When we talk to people and they say, what caused you to decide that you were going to jump out on your own and make your side hustle your, your full-time business? I was afraid of, of failure, right? I was afraid of failure in the terms that failure means not growing. Fear is a great motivator. When Robert said this to me, I thought, you know, it's so crazy because there's a little bit of that behind what so many people do. So I want to pull back the curtain for you guys just a little bit and talk about the way that we are actually motivated. So there's a couple of different things. There's towards motivated and away from motivated. And I'm not going to dig into it really in depth because number one, I'd probably bore you. And number two, this isn't the time or place to do that. The idea behind it is, though, that we are constantly either moving towards something and we're, or we're moving away from something. And the amount of internal motivation that we have to either reach a goal or avoid a consequence is what causes us to take action. And many times, people who are stuck and don't have the success that they want to have have an intense amount of away from motivated, which is fear based motivation. You're working away from a consequence. How many people do you know who th you hear say over and over again, oh, I've got to start working. I've got to make some calls. i got to do the sales process because I don't want to be broke at the end of the month. I don't want to have to take out a loan for rent. I don't want whatever comes after this, right? Those individuals are moving away from that consequence. This is where fear becomes your great motivator. Fear pushes us to do things that we may not otherwise be willing to do. Fear, and the fear doesn't have to be rational. That's what's so crazy. 99% of the time, it's not. I don't remember who said it, but I know that it's been turned into a million memes at this time that I have 100 problems and 99 of them are completely made up in my head and unreal. Does that relate to you? How many of the things that we're afraid of are complete and utter bullshit? Do those complete and utter bullshit things motivate us though? Absolutely they do. Because if we believe they're real, then they're real. So I would love for you guys to step back and take a little bit of time. This is going to be a shorter episode because I would really love for you to do this exercise. So take a minute. If you're in a place where you can write, if you're not, please bookmark this episode and go back and listen to it so that you can do this exercise. And I would love for you to think about when was the last time that you did something that scared the shit out of you? What was it? What context of your life was it in? And what were you thinking right before you took action? Understanding that, so that's part one, understanding that, how can you use that knowledge of what you were thinking right before you took action to allow yourself to take action faster in the future? If you know, if you are able to understand what it is that caused you to move out of that paralysis from fear and take action, then you can learn how to 
duplicate that to make that action time quicker and quicker and quicker. I'd love to know what your answers to that are. Shoot me a message. You can either track me down on Facebook, you can join the Success Center community, or you can send me an email, amber at amberferman.com. Let me know what this exercise did for you, how it worked for you. I don't give a lot of exercises on the podcast. However, I really wanted to give this because that idea that fear is a great motivator, it caused me to think about what was that thing that we think right before we take action? And how do we duplicate that? I'm really, really interested to see your guys' results. As always, remember, you have the ability to design the life you've always wanted, and you owe it to yourself to step out of your comfort zone and have the courage to live it. Thank you so much for listening to this episode of the More Than Corporate Podcast. If anything that was said during this episode resonated with you or provided value in any way, it would mean the world to me if you would head over to iTunes and leave a rating and review for the More Than Corporate Podcast. Thank you so much for taking the time to do that. I'm really looking forward to connecting with you. If you'd also like to connect, I've created a Facebook group that is full of amazing people who also make it their mission to live their best life every single day. If that's that sounds like something that you're interested in. The name of that Facebook group is Success Center. Head over there, request to join, and I look forward to connecting with you soon.